Okay, so I'm sure that you get a lot of questions, you know, fairly out of right field. I'm sure you've almost heard it all. So what are some of the biggest misnomers that you want to put to rest about Beta Blue Camp? Gosh, I think the number one stupidest thing out there on the Internet is the use of the term micronized. Uh, this, this thing has been out there, uh, on the internet probably as long as, as I've been involved. Uh, it, it's a term where I don't even know that micronized is a word. For those that don't understand it, a micron is a measurement of length, like a foot or an inch or a yard. So if I told you that something was inchized, or something was yardized, or something was footized, what in the world would that be telling you? It would be telling you nothing. So for this bozo to be using the term micronized in 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 describing the 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 uh, compound that he sells, what does that mean? Is it one micron, two micron, two hundred micron? Now, if the term submicronized were to be used, and that would indicate that the diameter of the particle would be less than one micron. Doesn't use that term. Well, I got news for you, for those of you that believe in God. God made all baker's yeast cells the same size, two to four microns. Therefore, mine, his, or anybody else, unless they've been crushed up by process, are all going to be two to four microns. Now, some of the stuff I see on his website talk about, oh, well, you know, they're throwing boulders and we're shooting bullets. And it's all just stupid hogwash preying on the ignorance of the public. And and the bottom line is your immune cells, we're talking about the phagocytes, can actually consume two, three, four, maybe even more of these two to four micron sized and how do I know that? Again, it's published in the peer-reviewed literature, and for those that can't read, we got pictures. So, so end of the story in regards to micronized. Another example is, I don't remember what year, but it's been at least five or six years ago, there was a study published out of Japan where these Japanese scientists made their own glucan. That didn't go into any uh, discussion about what or how, their source. And they fed a particular NSAID, a non-steroidal non uh, compound prescription, a prescription drug, to uh, these rats, and at the same time gave their beta glucan. Well, all their rats died. And from that single study, there have been a myriad of, of, of remarks, unsubstantiated, they don't even quote this study, uh, saying that, that uh, beta-glucan should not be taken then with things like aspirin and bufferin and, and anison and, and, and uh, Tylenol and whatnot. So I asked that uh, the experiment be repeated. And in fact, there has been a published study where larger doses for longer periods of time of this drug were given with and without beta-glucan. None of the rats died. In fact, other products, other brands other than ours were also done in the experiment. We couldn't kill them with anything. So I have to say that that, that information is as bogus as the day is uh, long. And then another one, and I don't mind citing it because I have written myself and I know others have written to WebMD, uh, I just have to say that, that they're not very reliable when they put in there that beta-glucan shouldn't be taken more than a few days, a week or so. I've asked them, where is your resource on this? I've got customers that I've had since 1996 have never missed a day at high-dose beta-glucan, and they're as healthy as health can be. Their children, and now their children's children, are taking it on a daily basis. I've never had one, listen to me, never had one person who's ever had a side effect where some doctor, you know, somebody somewhere said beta-glucan is the cause of this side effect. It is probably, if not the safest, one of the safest compounds 
you can put into your body. And that includes things like vitamin C, uh, vitamin A, you know, there are toxic levels of that. So, so yeah, th- that would probably be my top two or three that, that makes the hair stand up on the back of my neck. I'm sure there are other wild and spurious claims, both pro and anti-glucan. But the, those those are some of the ones that I see uh, float out there, and two three times a year, you know, I'll see those. After after fifteen or sixteen years, I think we've done a pretty good job of educating the public, the people that want to know. And again, they do their due diligence. Again, write it, write WebMD, and WebMD doesn't acknowledge them. Those kinds of things. It's uh, it's pretty certain that that uh, the tide is turning on some of these urban and false rumors. So.